Today, we are back with our very first repeat guest. We have Brandon from 9to5Warriors. They just launched their second wave for Kickstarter. So we're going to be taking a look at that, getting all of our questions answered. Make sure to stick around, find out more about 9to5Warriors. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Strong Collectors Podcast. I'm your host, Dakota, here with my special guest, Brandon. Unfortunately, Jordan had some family stuff to take care of, so he's got to miss out on this incredible interview we're going to be doing here. Um, but Brandon has been on the show before talking about 9 to 5 Warriors. Um, if you can go back and watch that, that was about probably a little over a year ago, maybe coming up on two years ago now. Um, but now we've got the brand new Kickstarter that just launched on the 25th, which I think was really cool that you timed it out to be on 925 for 925 Warriors. That <laughs> that itself is just cool. Um, but let's talk about what's actually going to be uh, a part of this Kickstarter because your wave one, you had, let's see, it was uh, Colonel Custard, which I picked up. I'm moving into the bus, so I don't really have a whole lot of room to collect action figures at the moment, but he'll be in storage waiting for me to get out of the bus. Tech Sergeant Scotchy, you had uh, Major Eraser and Commodore Crispin. He, he sold out, right? Yeah, he sold out currently. Okay. So, so thank you for having me on. It's a privilege to be on a second time. Awesome. Uh, so that was everything that's come out. So now that's a part of this uh, Kickstarter, we've got Brigadier Bouncy, we've got Lieutenant Led, Corporal Can, and then on kind of the villain side, the break room bandits, we've got Sergeant Spore, which kind of has always been one of my favorites. So I'm excited to see him. Uh, you. I've got Specialist Sugar and then number two. So uh, let's, I, I think one of the coolest parts about, especially from that last interview was like the psyche of all of these characters. Like, it's not just like, oh, here's a guy that's an eraser. It's like everybody here has like a reason for the way that they are. And I think that's so cool. So I, I don't know if you want to start there, but I would love to know kind of the psyche of some of these characters because we missed a lot of them in our last interview. Yeah, so like starting this project out the get-go, I just wanted it to feel rich in story and rich in character development. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, I felt like the toys that really just stuck with us throughout the generations all had rich stories and rich characters. Obviously, the Saturday morning cartoon um, era, we had great cartoons, we had great comics as well, lots of avenues to like tell the character's story and that's how this journey actually started. So I wanted to make a toy, I didn't want to make it a plain old regular old toy, I wanted to like feel special and something unique. So I started with story through comic books, the trading cards, the whole bank. And um, so then, yeah, each of those characters are richer story. The main character who's like behind the scenes and in, in the comic is Alan McMillan. So he's this quirky like office worker, the creative type that's stuck in like an uncreative environment. So during his free time, uh, he's like cr like creating his own adventures with his like office supplies and leftover food. And of course, like in typical 90s fashion, a freak accent brings them all to life. But before he was, um, they were brought to life, he would like speak to them, you know, give them the, the personalities. He also just had his like favorite pencil. And like one day the office booty snapped it in half and like, <laughs> instead of just throwing it away he's like i'll rebuild you and so like we had one end that was like resharpened and became the perfect pencil still and it's like lieutenant lead and then we had the other end which was uh double-sided pencils and that became number two and the story for him was pretty much exactly that like you have this useless tool like what do you usually do with this like you can't make a mistake with it you have double-sided pencils you kind of just like leave in a drawer you're like what the fuck is this mm -hmm. and that's the mentality that he kind of has starting with number two um so this useless supply kind of doesn't feel like he has a place to belong he used to be part of the the good guys which is the supplies mm -hmm. and just not feeling like he fit along like he's being number two he kind of wanted to be number one spot so he tried to overthrow major eraser he tried to like do his own thing and eventually he joined the bandits but he still doesn't fit there because obviously it's all food and rotten food so we have this like one character just just doesn't really feel like he belongs and that's like the rich story that i want to bring along with him so he's like the lone wolf of him this is an older hand sculpted version by scott hensley mm -hmm. 
but the I new love update the detail like the the chew marks on him too i think that's so I, cool i love it i'm pretty sure scott actually used his teeth in there. <laughs> <laughs> nice no but this is one of my favorites and it, it's an ode to like the old shredder pose like back in a, a ninja turtle like how it would actually squish into the packaging so it could fit with the rest of the turtles yeah um then yeah i mean if you have a specific character in mind, I can go through them, but yeah, I mean, I think last thing on, um, him is like, I think kind of, I remember as a kid, like you would have those double-sided pencils and I, as a kid, you're just kind of like, Ooh, this is like a double stabby side. So it kind of makes sense that he's like a ninja, a little bit more violent. Cause I feel yeah. like that's kind of the like personality of a two-sided pencil. So that's just super cool too. Um, next up. Let's let's go with Brigadier Bouncy because I believe I was listening to some other interviews you had done, and originally you had said that he was maybe going to be kind of like a bouncy material. Is that going to be the case? That's still going to be the case. Like awesome. now he's redesigned. Like he just has a really great feel to him. This is not bouncy still, but once he's produced, he'll have like an actual he'll bounce to him. Um, and this character, he's like the explosion specialist. He literally has like a strap of dynamite wrapped around him. Um, I wanted to re-sculpt this guy. Um, Scott did the original sculpting, which is right here. And this was all hand done. And a lot of people kind of just said, you know, the details kind of got lost. You couldn't really tell if it was a meat wad, et cetera. I took that and I just redefined it. And I, I did agree. Um, it's one of those things like once you start investing in everything, like I'm like a one man band. There's not, I wanted to like fix everything and like do everything as possible, but I had to take time to sit back and look at the line and redevelop it as for the new launch. But this character is like the goofball, you know, he's the first, <laughs> First to join the battle, and he's like throwing belches, farts, the usual. Um, and he is an explosion specialist, so he's one that's like covering around the bazooka. He's blowing up shit left and right, and he's just a fun character. Being a bouncy ball, there's nothing serious to him, so he just he can actually repel, you know, incoming mm. rounds just by bouncing off it. But I'm excited to bring this guy to life. Yeah, that's really cool, and I love his weapon too. He's gonna have what like the uh, like highlighter kind of arm cannon thing, right? Yeah, 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 and then. Time, this was sculpted digitally by uh, Seba by Planetary Dogs, and he's like familiar with um, the Plunderling line. So he's oh, yep. a talented artist, and I worked with him. He also did Scotchy from scratch. He did Spore mm -hmm. from scratch, um, Corporal Can, Sugar. Like last line was really 50 50, like hand sculpted and then refined in the digital, okay. and then some are completely digital. Okay. So is this line going to be more? like all digital or you still have some of the hand sculpted characters here too um some of the hand sculpted like lieutenant lead and okay. uh number two um those are still hand sculpted but again they were digitally scanned cleaned up and then brought into um the digital world like for instance this sword is now like a cocktail sword so it's like transparent oh, cool. and you know those like cocktail swords that you like transparent red <laughs> definitely that's awesome very cool um all right next up let's go to uh corporal can because that's one that when I first saw, and this is kind of the case with most of these characters, is I first saw him, I was like, oh, that's cool. But like, you know, that's not really one I would want too bad. And then just the more I look at him, the more I think he's so cool. Like the <laughs> the details of having the string coming out of the top of the lid, kind of like as communication and everything. So I'd love to hear more about him. Absolutely. And he's, he's an interesting character, like just from developing him in the storyline and everything. Like I really always liked him as a story, but it was always kind of like a concern. Like, how do I make a toy out of him? Like, cause I'm on the same boat, like he's a can of peanuts. Like, how do you make that exciting? And the first thing that came to mind was like the, the army bucket. And he like literally just be, be able to play with the bucket, but, <laughs> but inside the, the army bucket were those fun little cool little characters. And for me, that was uh, that's what we could do with the the pencil. I mean, the peanut characters. So, Corporal Ken, what's cool about him is he's the communications expert. So he was originally on the bandit side, but he's like a pacifist, you know. Like he literally just wants to be, <laughs> just be peaceful. He's kind of a scaredy can, as I, as I like to call it. Um, and after hearing Custard's like plan for like total office domination, he's like, okay, I gotta back out of here. This guy's a little crazy. So. Because of that, he joined the water cooler commandos around the same time as number two was leaving. So he helped them just become like an actual team because they're just like a ragtag group of office supplies mm. and they really don't know how to work together. And then now Corporal Can like strings them all the, all along. But the cool part, I'll show you in the, the prototype. There's a little shelf here. I'll put like a little sticker here with like little um, gadgets and gizmos. Nice. But the idea is that the peanuts live in there. 
Um, you have like the walkie talkie elements, you have like little microphone and gadgets. Mm -hmm. This thing lifts up, pops open into reveal. Right now it's three peanuts, but the idea, these characters are like fun little, like I, I like to treat them as like kids in a Halloween uh -huh. <laughs> costume. So depending on the mission, there's three of them. Depending on the mission is how they dress up. So this is like the standard like office worker spy type of thing. But I teased on my Instagram like a ninja looking character. There'll be a cowboy. There'll be like a ninja. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot more characters. But once we'll get to the unlocks later. Like that's the hope is that okay once this gets unlocked, if we can expand the line. But that's the premise of him is like he's a communications expert. These guys all line up, go go out reconnaissance. He radios in, and then the commandos know how to fight in sync and complete the mission. Oh, that's super cool. And I, I love that you have like the shelf in there too, because it, mm -hmm. I think, you know, with whatever it is, like product shots, like you want to make things look the best they can be. And like, I could see like a photographer kind of like dressing it up and like putting another something in there to make it so that those can stand on there. But that's actually how the toy is going to be built so that you can do that just straight out of the package and you can play with it, how it's shown. Um, Absolutely. And the original prototype um, didn't have the shelf, and I started like playing with it exactly that. I was like, "Damn, I kind of want the peanuts to pop out of there." Yeah. And like all this like perfect feature. So, in the product shots, and now in the final product is like all the peanuts can like line up on the shelf, and then they fit perfectly in there. This guy can hold, I think, I did the math, like over twelve peanuts. So, the oh, nice. the ability to, to um, expand is going to be important, and just have fun with all the different styles of peanuts. Yeah, that's and I love the like shots you have already of him or of the little peanuts kind of like around the cubicle. And I, I think that's probably the, uh, there's so many good things about it, but that's one of my favorite things is like, you could just put these in your cubicle and you're a part of the story that it's happening around you in your office. And they're not, you know, like, I think if you took like your Marvel legends or transformers, like, you know, we're kind of in like a day and age where it's like, you're not that weird, but you're still kind of weird for having those toys in there. But these like, you know, it fits with the office aesthetic. So it, it just blends so well. Thank you. That was, again, going back to the story and uh, importance of like just bringing you into the world. That was the main reason I went with the nine to five element is like um, I wanted collectors alike and even the kids growing up. Like there's still an element of like, where did my parents go? You know, like we're so at least for us, when we bring them into the house or in our office, you know, leave him uh, just like you, like the. <laughs> Yeah, toy shelf space becomes very limited. So mm -hmm. for me, I have them like in a cabinet. I have them like in areas. And like that was always the premise. Like really just you become Alan, hopefully, you know, like mm -hmm. you exactly how you say you, you get dropped into the world. Yeah, I feel like the only problem with that, though, is your packaging is so beautiful that it, they're hard to open. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I am a, yeah, I'm a box collector. So <laughs> if you can see around like half of my collection is in the box. And like when I dreamt of making this toy, I dreamt of the, obviously the toys and the story, but the first thought after was like the packaging. I was like, mm -hmm. I want the packaging to be so perfect. And like something that I really wanted to hang up on my, my wall with my toys. And like, I mean, I worked with Turbo Quirk, love the illustrations he's got. I worked with another artist, um, who did the background art, my graphic designer, like the back of the card was probably something I like, it's just, I marinated forever. I couldn't quite like, I knew what I wanted, but I couldn't quite picture it. And I worked with a couple of designers. We couldn't ever get it right. And then I finally found the one designer that like still worked to this day and we perfectly executed it. Like, I just wanted to feel like something you sit in the back of the car, mm -hmm. you know, on your way home from Toys R Us and you're like waiting to dig into it. You're reading about the story. You're seeing what other characters are available and that's the total execution. So speaking of Corporal Can, he is he is going to have his own separate type of packaging because he doesn't write. He's pretty big for a blister card. Sure. It'd be massive, and it would f mess up the aesthetic of all the others. Um, so he's going to have like a a custom box, and okay. it's going to look really cool. So I'm excited to get to design that if he gets through. Okay. Um, so I guess going off of that box, before we get into the other characters, you're also doing the battle bits which are we, we kind of talked about on the other one you were thinking about doing that this is taking your own household objects and turning them into your kind of play set or vehicles is that going to maybe be a part of corporal cans packaging um we'll look into that okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um th for them to be i want 
Battle Bits for it to be like a standalone. I'm going to have a lot of fun with the packaging for Battle Bits. But the premise with that was like since day one of launching this, people literally asked like, when are you doing the vehicles? I'm like, chill, yeah. chill. <laughs> Let me get the, the characters out. Um, but I've always, of course, wanted to do vehicles. That's the most fun part of any toy line in the 80s and 90s. Um, but in today's world, like realistically, the tooling and all the mm-hmm. production costs, like I'm not big yet to to justify like yes i can make a vehicle now like what's cool is i've been working with other artists to bring shit to life and like this was like a cool little pringles vehicle that someone did and like this would be such a perfect car you know but for that to be a reality like you're gonna end up paying like super seven prices like 300 dollars. i'm like right i don't do that myself and i wouldn't want to put that into other people's so the idea for battle bits came from that it's like i want to again re-spark imagination make these toys fun again and Battle Bits just came to me and I was like, this is a cool creative way. Like, how could we make like pencils and pens and all these things come together to be like part of the world? Mm-hmm. And cut to maybe the last Toy Fair, I think it was 2023 or something. Um, but I met these two awesome students that are mechanical engineers. And like, I was working at the booth at Plunderlings, funny enough, and they were like, just talking, oh, this is a great line. Like I said, I'm like, oh, hey, I'm Brandon. I'm part of 9to5 Warriors. They're like, what? 9to5 Warriors? I love them. I was like, what? You know me? Cool. <laughs> so we hit it off there. And like, um, their, their names are Andy and Ian. And they're, they were studying to be mechanical engineers. And they're just telling me they would love to get into the toy industry. They want to figure out how to do it. They were just asking me for advice, you know? And after talking to them for a while, they just told me like their interests, like they love Legos and they love building stuff and they want to build robots one day and like stuff that just connects with one another. And I was like, oh shit, did I just find like the universe gave me the guys to bring Battle Bits to life? So like I worked with them um, December 20, like 2003, December to January basically. Um, and they brought Battle Bits to life, which is such an awesome thing because it was in my mind for like maybe two years. And I'm like, how can it work? Because there's something that is, it's not just about connecting pencils. It was like, I want it to work with like, you know, um, a, the characters, which mm-hmm. was cool is like, you have these little clips that can actually connect with pencils. These are like 3d printed. So they're still stiff, but they're going to be, you know, elastic and plastic. So each of the characters always had like a, you know, the peg holes. So they would be able to connect to this. Um, and you're able to place the characters anywhere you want. And they work with, pens, markers, anything with the same diameter. Some of them will allow larger markers. Um, there's suction cups on the bottom of these bases. So it's like, A, you can have something here on the, the surface of the desk where you can be hanging, you know, off a window or mirror and like get really creative with it. Um, they also work with binder clips. There's this one piece. I don't have a binder clip with me, damn it. But there's this one cool piece that you actually connect a binder clip there. And then that way it can snap onto pieces of paper so you can create like a flag or the, the platform where they can stand you can create uh attach it to uh plastic utensils anything like it literally is kind of endless the type of creativity you can do with it and that was the coolest thing so these guys and ian ian are actual builders and they play with lego so they're perfect demographic to a build it and then test it out so i just said like come up with you know three or four different um vehicles or contraptions i gave them like i would like something like a catapult i would like something like a watchtower i love something like a chopper but they also went free reign and like just came back to me after a week and i was here's this i was like damn okay this is really crazy that it works (laughs) this piece for instance works with um uh tape dispenser so the rolls so you can act like a wheel Mm -hmm. and there's little slits in here that can actually stick like the the tail end of plastic utensils Mm -hmm. so it can act as a propeller or Oh, cool. Again, anything you, you put your mind to. And I don't know, that's how Battle Bits came to, came to be. And I just like had fun with it. We originally designed like raw elements of connectors. And I told him, let's leave the deco till later. And then looked at what primary pieces we need to create certain things that we were envisioning. And then from there, we're like, okay, what can this actual shape be? So this one's like a bubble gum. Mm-hmm. These are like rubber band things. These are paper clips for the foot pegs. These little stapler things, like this one's like literally a paper wad with nice. glue on the bottom of it. So it's like little clever shit like that. I just yeah. had like a block making it. I love that it still like fits within. It's not just like, you know, here's a you just a clip to hold things together. It, it still looks like the office supplies and it's, they would have put these things together to make their things. So I, yeah. I love the creativity element, but you know, I, I'm not 
the most creative person? Is there going to be like a few instruction sheets of like, okay, if you want to build this thing, do it this way? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. <clears throat> on launch, we'll, I'm going to probably lock myself to three, mm -hmm. um, but there'll be more. It's, it, it depends, A, if it gets funded, and then B, how many much more resources I can dedicate towards mm -hmm. it. Because that's what's tough. It's like, again, one man band is not endless pockets. I'm not Mattel or Hasbro. Mm -hmm. so everything I do is like, carefully <laughs> executed and like <laughs> really thought out like i'm like okay there's x amount of people that are willing to buy nine to five warriors out of that how many are willing to buy battle bits mm -hmm. and you just have to be smart about it but yeah. i definitely will include instructions for at least three models that's really cool and i, I think it's kind of cool because as the community grows you'll probably see more because you know I, I i like my mythic legions and four horsemen things and those are very like pop and swap friendly and kind of easy yeah. customization things and that's kind of what this will be and then i'm I'm, I'm, I think they're going to come up with some cool things that like they'll be able to share on like whatever groups and you'll get their recipes for how they built, you know, whatever their thing, their tank. And then like, oh, use this clip here, use these. And so I, I think that's going to be super fun. That's 100 percent what I'm hoping for. And I'm excited about like everything I do with these guys is like I can't wait to get them in people's hands. So for years, I was just talking about the concept of nine to five warriors. And then up until last year, when I first started shipping or this year, really I started shipping in March. Um, that's when everything kind of just became a reality and it's been awesome to actually see these in people's collections and people's mm -hmm. freaking like lives and like them also texting me that like, Oh, their, their kid loves playing with it. Their kids doesn't usually play with toys, but they love this. I'm like, damn, everything's working. It's really, it's been surreal. And that's what gave me, you know, like, okay, let's move forward with the rest of the line. Mm -hmm. So I guess, how did that feel, you know, taking it from concept to in people's hands to then. I would think even a step farther to, cause that's gotta be exciting just to see your, your idea come to fruition. But then, like we said, Commodore crisp is sold out. So it's not only people are buying it, people are buying all of it. <laughs> yeah. It's been great. I mean, what's cool is all of the sales from day one. Um, I know like two years ago is when I launched all 10, you know, I announced mm -hmm. all 10. Um, and that was truly a test. A, I was very ambitious in a sense of like, I don't know what's, gonna happen a lot of people said that's a lot of figures i'm like i know but i want to see what which ones are live which ones are less live and i also had a lot of video content so i said i was wishful thinking and like maybe i can make it happen mm -hmm. but realistically i would have needed like five thousand sales across everything <laughs> so all 10 characters did exactly really well so it wasn't there there was no clear winner and i ultimately just chose the four that i wanted to bring to life besides obviously you need the two leaders and i just at that point i just picked the two ones that I wanted to see come to fruition uh, because I just didn't have enough fun spruce all 10. Um, but that being said, like I announced all 10 of them and I was just excited to get them out there in the world. And I was like, shit. So yeah, for them to sell out now is just, it's still, it's still surreal. And I'm like going back, like Commodore Chris is still a top seller, but the other ones are like right behind it. So it's like, that's, what's cool. Like everything's kind of low inventory now. I started doing like a collector's bundle, which included the lunchbox and a comic yeah. book. And that's been selling really well too. So I'm stoked. Yeah, those are super cool. Um, so now that, you know, they're starting to sell out, is that going to be something that's possible for, you know, as this Kickstarter is starting to get made, could you throw in some extra Commodore crisps and other characters that are, you know, eventually going to sell out this, then we restock those, or is that maybe down the line a little bit? There will definitely be a restock later. Um, but what's cool is those that have the first edition will ha always have the first edition mm. the like for instance the back of the packaging that are already out in production show the older models okay. of you know brigadier bouncy and specialist sugar so like to me that's kind of cool like for those that like went in on the, the concept and f believed in it at least they have the first edition of the first edition um i will reveal variants which are very oh, cool nice so some of the variants for the original batch as a much requested realistic major eraser. So like the pink, the nice. pencil markings and like rubber oh, look. Yeah. Badass. Um, I made a chocolate version of Colonel Custard. Cool. Very cool. Uh, it's kind of a, a throwback to Food Fighters as well. Hmm. Um, I made a fiery hot Commodore Crisp, but you have like a <laughs> nice. not so fiery hot like flavor. Yeah. And then I uh, decked out uh, Tech Starch and Scotchy. So he's like, think like Splinter Cell. Okay. Very so like, cool. oh, like neon green goggles and i love it so i had an awesome painter work on those so i i will tease those 
throughout the Kickstarter, maybe like a surprise, you know, unlock. Oh, here okay. And there. So maybe we yeah. see those as unlocks in the future here as part yeah. of the Kickstarter. Very cool. All right. Yeah, that's I, I love those ideas of because I, I feel like sometimes it, it can feel kind of cheap to just do like repaints of things, but like these feel very like, you know, even if it's not the same character, you know, it's maybe a different character. You can make that up in your head, but even like you said, if you don't have the first version, the second version is still, it sounds super cool and fun. So I'm excited to see those as we uh, approach those unlocks and everything. And I will release the, the original, original four. Um, they will have slightly different packaging. Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, I might be doing, you know, combo packs. Like I still have to determine how that looks right now. The focus has just been shifted to like getting the rest of the lineup that I yeah. revealed now, like two years ago out right. and, hopefully new characters uh, to, to share. That's that's what I was wondering if there's new character and maybe not even part of this Kickstarter. Maybe it is. We'll find out. But are there, I would assume there's no shortage of characters in your uh, back pocket that you want to be making for waves, you know, five, seven, ten down yeah. the road. If the possibilities are truly endless. Is that's the, <laughs> the impatient part of me is like, hurry up. I want to get to those points already. Right. Because like, they announced these guys a while ago and I'm like, it's just taken, I wanted to, once the four were selected, people kept on asking, are you going to do Corporal Ken? Are you going to do like, funny enough, Corporal Ken was one of the most popular too, like requests later. Um, are you going to do this? Are you going to do this? And I'm like, I kept on saying, yeah, I'll do a Kickstarter soon, Kickstarter soon. But I wanted to honestly just focus on getting these toys out there, um, testing out the factory, see how they worked. Like I've been dealing with fragile 3D printed, you know, prototypes mm -hmm. forever. So having the final, final version in my hand was like just a surreal moment. And I was like, holy shit, they're legit. And they're like, the factory just did a phenomenal job. Those that own it, like the quality of the toy is truly, it's, it's top tier. Um, and yeah, so now that, again, I started shipping in March. Now that they're out there, people are resonating with them. People know that I'll deliver, you know, that was another mm -hmm. thing. Like I'm a new company, I'm a new person. Um, so that always just takes trust. So now that like nine five warriors is somewhat established, there's a fan base out there. I feel confident in like let's launch series two. Very cool. And you said that when we talked last, that you were going to try to like go over to China to be able to like expedite the process. And were you able to do that with the first round? I didn't even need to. Um, they were my friend who vetted the factory. Um, went to China first. Okay. He was in that kind of like they're legit, and I trusted him. Um, and like, honestly, they just moved so quickly. It was pretty awesome. And like it lined up where it, they, they finished on Christmas and the plan was like, okay, I still kind of wanted to go just because like, I wanted to see it happen. I wanted right. to film it, but they also started sending me footage of like this stuff. And I was like, this is pretty awesome. Uh, I still want to go to China just period. I think it'd be an awesome trip, but I, I wasn't able to go. So maybe okay. for the next match. Okay. That's cool. I mean, I, I like the idea of that or, you know, even having somebody there too, to just you know, keep that ball rolling. Cause I know you were saying it, it can be a kind of tedious process going back and forth with the time zone change and yes. having the new year switch over and all that. So, um, that's cool. Knock on uh, wood. I mean, honestly, it went smoothly. So hopefully yeah. for the next batch is the same, same, same team, same regiment. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. So with this Kickstarter, when this Kickstarter ends, do you, is there going to be like a period for retailers to order extras or are they going to be ordering through this and then kind of i guess where that question goes is like when will the kickstarter ends to when is this going to be in my hands or do you have so, like an estimated time yeah um so first question retailers will be able to uh, purchase right from the kickstarter okay. um that's the best part now it's like i know all the pricing i know how many fit in a carton i know what this the carton sizes are i know what the package sizes are except for a couple candles, so I'll have to kind of figure them out. But I might, I don't know. That guy's, since he's not going to be in the same exact, you know, uh, container, <laughs> uh, I don't know how many he could fit in a carton. So I, I kind of just don't want to guess. I might just leave the other to, to retailers. Um, but since I have all those numbers, it's going to be super easy to get some more support. And that's been awesome too, man. Like, um, I went from like launching in March to being in like over. 20 or 30 stores across the United States. Uh, I am in UK. I wow. am in Taiwan. I am. I just sent a huge batch over to Australia, which is going to be sick. So for those down under, they should be uh, there soon through pop culture. So that's very awesome. big kind out there. Um, 
who else? Big Bad Toy Store has always been a supporter from day one. Mm-hmm. So I'll be replenishing through them as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm still nervous, honestly. Like there's being – 95 Warriors like has been described to me <laughs> as like it's a really cool concept. It's an awesome thing. You're like the cool kid in the corner that just – we don't know how to play with you just yet. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's clearly not a six-inch figure. It's clearly mm-hmm. not highly articulated. It's not this, this, and that. But like that's what I love about it is it has the charm of what I grew up with and what I still collect all around me is very much, you know, that – classic articulation that nostalgia feel that rich storyline that i was started started saying so i'm still nervous that like because i still have to like convert people into nine to five right. warriors <laughs> like i i which is cool i can i can attract like the vintage collectors which is which usually don't tap into modern toy lines but they mm-hmm. have been supportive of the byline it's the toy photographers and like those collectors of like the harley articulated lines that slowly but surely they kind of seen seeing the appeal the appeal and i i think with battle bits too like i always told the toy photographers too like yes you may not be able to pose them in different ways but the 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 frame around them and the world around them is your playground like get really mm-hmm. creative with what you're putting in putting them in you know yeah. and i've seen some amazing toy photographers just like bringing that to life and yeah i'm still nervous but i'm setting this um kickstarter goal to a relatively low amount i'm doing um as of now it's planned for like 45k to be the goal for four characters and then the next unlock is 15k after that and that would be special sugar another 15k after that would be corporal can another 15k after that would be battle bits another 15k after that would be an unknown character character, and some other stuff that we'll see what how far we can go but that's the goal around so i'm excited awesome so we haven't i don't think we've talked about specialist sugar yet and i don't even think we talked about her on the last episode so let's let's dive into her real quick and we're kind of bouncing around we're not going in very order this is this is just how my brain works so hopefully listeners you're not too bothered by that but (laughs) how mine works too so specialist sugar i love the character um in the story um she's everyone did always ask like why is she human face and like this goes back to the storyline again like alan being the office work he has like a crush on the receptionist and in the comic there's a glimpse of it like he's like staring at the receptionist receptionist and daydreaming and he's like doodling in sugar and that was the premise of like him trans like trans um transferring that energy of like the love and lust and everything into the doodle the sugar and that's why she takes that primary primary shape of like Mm. she pretty much reflects the receptionist so in a new version I did make her more monstrous and like evil looking. I definitely did refine her and I actually love the, the new look of her, but she still has the same premise of like interchangeable arms um, that you can change out. Um, and, sh- and then like the sugary base, like I love that look of like, she's just looking like, molded out from the ground beneath and she comes with like a shield, two swappable arms. I love the uh, larger fist size sugar mm-hmm. cluster. And like the Terminator style, like spear, <laughs> but she's badass. So her story, um, so she's like, she's really like the Colonel Custer is the the you know the mastermind. At least he pretends to be, to be mm-hmm. but she's like, calling the shots behind the, the shot the shit. And the bandits really fall in line for her. So she's super smart. She's a strategic planner of it all. She likes to just say she works with idiots because none of them seem to follow <laughs> her lead. Um, but yeah, she's a badass. I'm looking forward to creating more female characters. Um, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, love how the new design came out. Super excited to see where that goes. Yeah, I, I, she kind of has that like Sandman type of power set, right? Kind of yeah. can change density, grow different weapon. I, I love weapon arms. Like, you know, if you put wings on something, I'm a fan. If you put <laughs> hands for weapons, that's another one that checks a box for me. <laughs> So next, she's going to have wings and arms. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it kind of makes sense that she would have wings, you know? She could just yeah. sugar out or use the packet. and That's the premise. Is like she's completely shapeshifter, so I might have forgotten to say that. But since she's sugar, she can literally shape into anything. And that's why she's kind of like the most dangerous. But the the premise is like the, the, the commandos better dissolve her fast kind of mm. thing. So like okay. there's always – she has her weaknesses. Okay. And she's – is she is she like real sugar or is she like artificial sweetener? Artificial sweetness. Okay, I, I like that because it's kind of like that fake sweetness. I, that's it is. another layer of fun details. 
um i w- i would say i don't know my, my wife looks at all the figures i get and like i kind of show her what's new coming out but when i was showing her your stuff she's very adamant that this cartoon needs to be made because she wants to watch it <laughs> so that's the cool part man like ever since launching this like i've gotten a lot of traction and i pitched it a few times and i honestly the hollywood such a state of disarray right now um obviously the the writer strikes screwed up a lot of things the animation studios closing down netflix closing its animation studios there's been a lot of like halts mm-hmm. um but i'm excited because there's a lot of interest and it's just kind of like a matter of time and i love that because this was always again going back to the story like this was always the vision of like i really wanted to create a tv show and an adventure series mm-hmm. uh the whole idea came from going into a toy store and remembering how I grew up and thinking, damn, like I want to be that future nostalgia for the kids growing up today because I just don't see anything for them. And we go to Target, we go to Walmart, we see everything from our childhood we on the shelf still. The kids today have no cartoons to watch, have no right. like real movies that are like, like I just see, you know, um, Voltron, like 40th anniversary, like, this cute like, little people box set that just turns into a transformer. I'm like, that's super cool and creative, but like, it's the 40th anniversary. Like, who's, <laughs> right. can, what kid knows about Voltron? Yeah. Is there a cartoon coming along with it? Is there a new movie at least? Like, there's nothing. So, what attachment is that toy for? Mm-hmm. Is it for the grown man to like hopefully share with their kid? But then the kid's like, okay, that's cool. They're like, I don't know what to watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're going to go to Paw Patrol or something. Yeah. So, I created this, honestly, even though it's set in an office and people do constantly say it's for Adult Swim, I'm totally for that. I mean, I watched Adult Swim when I was a kid, um, but the premise was always for kids and the idea was always for like the Toys R Us kids like myself to, to discover it and then share it with their kids that are they're having now. And yeah. that's been the coolest part. Like like I said, getting those texts and like, my kid loves this. Oh my God, I love this. Like they're playing with the toys and like, that's cool. That's the premise. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is like an interesting like conundrum to be in because I, I could totally see that working with like an adult swim kind of more adult cartoon where there's, you know, maybe a little more raunchy or swearing or whatever. But then you're right, like it kind of isolates out the kids. But if you would target the kids, then you could they could grow up with it. And then, you know, they're eventually going to have an office job and then they can bring their toys into work and everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that is kind of an interesting aspect that I hadn't really considered before. I would love it for you know, to draw that fine line of like the sweet spot would be like the eight to 12 of the 12 year olds, you know, like they're little smarter and wittier. They can mm-hmm. kind of understand that humor. I wouldn't want to go full, you know, fully adult. But right. again, if someone comes to me with the right amount, like, we'll see what happens. True. <laughs> but, yeah. See what happens, man. We, I mean, we got RoboCop as a kid as the most violent movie, and then turn into a Saturday morning cartoon. So much true. <laughs> yeah, the, the possibilities are endless. Let's just say that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so there's, I guess, going off of going from cartoons to print, you have issue one of the comic. Is there plans yeah. for more issues? Yeah, and that's the thing too. I'm just. I'm waiting for the demand. Um, the toys have been doing really well. The comic does really well as well, but I don't, and people do ask for issue two, but it's one of those things I'm again, self publishing. It's hard yeah. to focus on two different avenues and everything costs a lot of money, but I am working with a writer to do series two. I would, I talked to Mike who did the original comic, um, Mike Anderson, amazing artist, Mike comics on Instagram, super cool style. He's so down and excited to work on it again. And I just have to find either the funds or resources. I am going to be releasing a variant cover okay. for issue number one for those that don't have it. And then those that do are collecting it, like at least there's a variant cover that's just really badass artwork. Um, <clears throat> for issue two, I mean, I got the stories all written. Okay. You know, they finesse with another writer, but everything's there. It's just a matter of like, do people want it? And mm-hmm. will. You know, I get a lot of likes and shares, but like, I need to see the conversion. So if there's a demand sure. for it, then of course. Cool. All right. So I, I can't remember what this other Kickstarter was, but they had done kind of like collaboration figures with other uh, like YouTubers. Like I know Toysha's had a thing, but then I'm kind of wondering what, what do we have to do to get the uh, strong collectors? Cause I have this, <laughs> when Jordan and I were in 
fourth grade, we used to like write like superheroes. And I had this one. I might have to bleep it out so nobody steals my idea. But it was like <laughs> a kind of guy. His name was awesome. So he had like pencils coming out of his hands. Maybe it'd just be lead. <laughs> I'd love to see love that figure made. And, you know, right, me... you're the guy to do it. <laughs> That's 100% the route I kind of want to go is I have my ideas for days as well. But even in this, I'm teasing it. I am working with new like artists and just like um, one of the reveals is going to be through making a mutant. So if you don't know this cool freaking um, Instagram club, it's called making a mutant. It's a group of talented artists from all over the world, literally um, every month or so. It's kind of it's been every quarter now. But every month or so, they come up with a theme, you know, like uh, this month's theme of doing something for C is for creature. Mm. Um, but all of them kind of do a body part. So it's like the head, someone just works on the head, someone just works on the arm, someone just works on the torso, someone just works on the leg. And all these different artists kind of come together. And at the end, we reveal this, the mutant that we created. And it's been badass to be part of that group and see mm. at some point I was sketching, I mean, um, sculpting myself. So I contributed to at least two or three figures. And so the whole time I was in that club, I'm like, damn, this is such a cool concept. Uh, just seeing everyone come together and just like from all over the world, complete there. We don't reveal anything to each other. So it's like we're working in silos and then it's like, ta-da. And it always <laughs> works out. And it's so cool. So they did like a Apocalypto, you know, version. They did Samurai. They did like everything you can think of, the themes. So one of my Kickstarter goals is going to be a Making a Mutant you know, contest. Oh, okay. So there I have, I think over 15 artists, maybe, maybe a dozen. I don't remember the exact number have multiple artists and we'll see who actually delivers working on their own nine to five warriors. So I gave them the premise. They can either choose the water cooler commando, the good guys like, like supplies uh, or the break room bandits with rotten food and they're the bad guys. So one of my goals for the, un for the unlocks will hopefully reveal the making the mutant like selection. So okay. I'll have the backers choose from the 10, 12, whatever, how many final designs I actually have, which nine to five warrior they want to be next. So that's what's cool about like this. Just I love working with artists. Honestly, the best part <laughs> is the collaboration because I have ideas for days, but I'm like, I'd rather work with someone, give some freedom or just like collaborate. It's, it's really cool to just see other people's visions of this. So excited to see like what these guys create i don't even know yet like I, yeah. <laughs> they're asking me for feedback and some lore and like here here just keep your keep your item a secret and like uh, i'm gonna reveal that on october 15 probably through a live stream we'll, we'll go for all the designs and then that gives us hopefully we'll see where the kickstarter is at if we're close to the to the goal for that specific segment then I'll, you know, give it to the backers to vote which character goes in next. So if you're a fan of nostalgia, if you're a fan of new action figures and you want to, like, test something new, like, give 9 to 5 Warriors a shot, appreciate your support, seeing it come to life is just, it's it's really amazing. Like, this is how I feel we can show the other companies, the entertainment business, everything, that we want something fresh and we just want something new. Otherwise, I feel like the future is just full of more remakes and sequels to things that, like, were a hit in the past, like, Let's give the generation growing up today something new. Let's give ourselves something new. So thank you for listening and hopefully support the channel. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I will leave the link to the Kickstarter down below. So go check it out. Uh, send me screenshots when you're backing it. I'd love to know what you all are getting. Uh, make sure you're liking, sharing, and subscribing. And until next time, stay strong.